welcome everyone. Um, I see we have about the same amount of people that we usually get at our meetings, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. My name is Diana Manjarres. I'm the president of the Elgin Hispanic Network, and I also work for the Grand Victoria Foundation. Um, we have a couple of announcements from the EHN board members today, and our host presentation today will be by Hanover Township. We're very excited to hear what they have to share with the group. Um, I want to invite you all to put in your information in the chat so that we know who's here and if there's someone that maybe you've been trying to touch base with, you can have their contact information. Um, earlier today, we had our informal networking led by Jose Macias. He had some wonderful questions about different books and movies and shows that people might be watching. So if you're interested in more informal networking, be sure to join us next month. Um, where we will actually be in person next month. We'll share a little bit more about that um, soon. So first off, um, I want to introduce Jose Macias. He is a new board member to the LGBT Hispanic Network Board. He will be um, serving as the marketing chair. So we're super happy and excited to have him join. And he um, has a new camera he's shared. So we're also very excited for those fantastic photos that he will be um, taking of all of us. And I want to stop sharing so that we can um, see each other a little bit more. So Jose, do you want to just say hello to everyone? I just want to say hello to everybody. Um, hopefully, we'll, I'll be seeing you next month, as we'll talk about in a little bit. And you'll see me with my camera. Uh, just briefly about myself. Um, I am manager of development at Advocate Sherman Hospital right on Randall Road. I fundraise for the hospital for different programs in addition to perhaps maybe equipment or any renovations that we may need. I'm just excited to be a part of the Algern Hispanic Network, you know, as a marketing chair, trying to, you know, get the word out more about what it is that we're doing and our members are doing. So again, um, when we are going to be in person, I just look forward to really talking with all of you and, and taking all your pictures. Thank you. Thank you, Jose. I want to invite David to give us an annou the announcement for the picnic next month. So yes, next month uh, we will be having a live picnic. Um, hopefully at Wing Park, I will we will get definitely more details. I need to double check with the city to make sure just what are their guidelines, but I think we should be fine. Um, I don't think, <coughs> excuse me, I hope, but I don't think we'll have more than 50 people out there, but um, so there'll be a, a live uh, meeting next next month in June. It'll be a, uh, an ice cream social, and the ice cream will be provided by us at EHN. Um, if you do want to bring a, a sack lunch, you know, and make it a true picnic, you can bring your own sack lunch, but we will be providing the ice cream and the desserts for the, the members. And then hopefully, <laughs> excuse me, we're hoping to meet with also the uh, scholarship recipients as well. So we're hoping they'll be in attendance too. And then that way, traditionally, we can all give them uh, college tips. Um, that's what we've done in the past where we kind of shared our experience of college and just some takeaways that they can take while they venture into this uh, a new life stage of theirs. Um, and saying that, traditionally, we also provide them with a survival kit, like a survival laundry basket of goodies and stuff. So we can send them off with, you know, detergent, ramen noodles, popcorn, you know, notebooks, pens, all the whole shebang. Um, because of everything and COVID, I know normally we have like a supply drive, but since times are kind of unique, we're asking if, if you can donate uh, funds. So I think we're gonna have, I believe a link or something set up where you can donate online. But if you know a board member and you know where uh, that board member, he or she may be working or, or reach out to them and they can meet up with you. And if you wanna do a monetary donation, that's, um, that's all we're asking for. And again, totally optional. It's nothing mandatory from the members. Again, anything you guys can give is much appreciated, whether it's a dollar, $20 or $100. Again, um, whatever you can do. And then the board will shop, we'll get the baskets all filled up and then we'll be able to present the baskets at the at the event. So we'll send some reminders about that. So this year won't be a school supply supply drive, but we are still looking to raise at least funds to buy the school supplies for the students. Um, I think that's it, unless anyone else want, or Linda, if you feel that or anything. Thank you, David. If you go onto the EHN site, can we make a donation there and put, is there a place we can put like school supplies or? Yeah. 
Absolutely. So okay. that's what we're working on. I don't know, Diana, if we set that up yet, um, but we did talk about that at our last board meeting that we did want to put something on our site. Hopefully there, yeah, it might be already set up. I'm not sure. Yeah, um, but we'll definitely get the words. The okay. donate button is available. We do want to have an ex, um, a page with, that just describes a little bit more the purpose of the donation, but you can go ahead and donate through the donate button and just say that it's for the scholarship recipients. And the date of the picnic will be June 23rd and we'll meet at noon. Like okay, previously. yeah, June 23rd. Um, yeah, like I said, more detail to come. Probably going to be Wing Park, but um, saying that also, um, if we can have the funds by... I would say June 15th, if you can get us any donations by June 15th, again, much appreciated. Um, I know our, our uh, members always step up to this. And I think this is very important for our students, our scholarship winners to go, go into their first day of college, you know, with a nice care package, a survival, we call them survival package, you know, survival kits. So, all right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, David. Um, any other questions about that event? All right, thank you. Um, we are still looking for one more board member. Um, the finance chair position is open. If you know of anyone who would be interested in uh, joining EHN and being more um, engaged with us in that way, please send them my way or they can also reach out to any of the board members. And I would like to introduce to you guys, Mike from Hanover Township. Uh, Mike, you should be able to share your uh, presentation. Okay, can you hear me okay? Yes. And more importantly, can you see everything okay? We can. Okay, good deal. Well, it's a pleasure to be able to talk to everyone today. And uh, we're going to tell a little bit about the emergency services for Hanover Township. And uh, <clears throat> I've been with the organization for roughly 18 months. Uh, so I'm, I still consider myself a, uh, a new coordinator. And um, I uh, retired out of the fire department. I worked 28 years in the city of Taylorville, which is down by Springfield and Decatur is a bedroom community. And uh, everyone went uh, northeast and northwest. Uh, to work in Springfield and a lot of blue collar jobs that were in Decatur. But uh, so after I retired, I was uh, looking around and um, uh, and uh, came across this position here. I'd, I'd heard about Hanover Township for quite some time uh, before I applied for the job. And, uh, you know, and, and we have a uh, kind of a close circuit of folks that uh, that um, are in emergency management. And I'd always heard of Hanover Township and I was very I was really surprised after I applied and uh, went through all that process. And it's just a fantastic organization. Um, I'll get into the nuts and bolts over here in a moment, but uh, it's a organization that has a paid director, which is myself, and the rest are uh, professional volunteers. And they're just a fantastic group of folks. And it's been a privilege to, uh, to be their lead uh, for the last 18 months. So we'll kind of kick off and start by saying that, um, uh, oops, let me go to this next slide here. Um, it's a, a oh, uh, Mike, do you want to press uh, present slideshow so we can see the oh, slides bigger? Oh, I'm sorry. Let's see. Okay, can you not see that next slide? We can see it, but it's not in presentation format. So we see uh, like the next slides as well. And it might just be easier for people to read what's on the slides there. We can see that. Much better? Yes. Okay, there we go. Okay, so the, uh, the Hanover Township Emergency Services, it's, as it says here, it's an organization of uh, professional volunteers trained in a wide variety of emergencies. We work um, with law enforcement and fire service on the fringe of their operations, but we're set up to where we can actually operate on our own, uh, independent of another fire service or law enforcement organization. So uh, we have a, a very dedicated group of professionals uh, that exist to provide and train equipped unit to assist Howard Township residents, but also outlying areas as well. So, um, some of the credentials that we're very proud of, we have a uh, merged operations plan that's been validated by the Cook County. Uh, we're also a Cook County Hazard Mitigation Planner Partner. We're the only Cook County Certified Emergency Management Agency, and we're certified storm ready, which is the only township in Illinois to hold that certification. 
So the question is who can join? Well, we have adults uh, ranging between 18, and really we don't have a cap on the, uh, on, the, uh, on the highest side, but we're a very diffuse group, of professional men and women. We certainly encourage diversity in our unit reflective of the population that we serve and all the trainings provided internally by the, by the emergency services unit are ourselves. Uh, we have roughly a 35 unit uh, volunteer membership and uh, it's divided into three rotating teams. So you can't just come in and, and get an application and join. It is a process here and it's, uh, it includes applicant screen or interviewed by a panel. Uh, there's a background check, a sex offender registration check, an oath of office, work comp insured, pre-employment drug and alcohol testing. Then we begin uh, your probationary uh, membership. And that is a, a three-month probationary requirement. Uh, within that, there is a driver training course. Uh, the probationary members and their skills, they have to go through a, uh, a quite a cadre of classes. There's 51 individual skills they have to learn uh, based upon 23 different topics. Uh, we require our membership uh, each member to do two 20, or excuse me, two overnight shifts each month. The membership, I mean, it's a pretty stringent requirement. Uh, we do have them uh, put in 20 hours of monthly either training uh, events or by call out. Um, that's for the membership, the general membership. Uh, the officers have to have 30 hours uh, on their uh, uh, their regimen of training and otherwise. And we require members to do 50% of the training requirements. And if they can't meet that, uh, we try and help them out uh, and try and work around their lifestyle to see exactly where they're falling short. Uh, if they fall within, uh, if they fall short within two, uh, two months, uh, then they receive an administrative letter from myself expressing our, our uh, concerns. And after the three month time period, they're still not able to meet our requirements. So we can either go on leave of absence or they'll have to be discharged from the unit. Oops, sorry. So the service area that we have, of course, we take care of the communities within the township, the six cities, and we have a lot of out, outlying, outlying areas with our mutual aid partners. And I believe we have 12 mutual aid uh, agreements in place as it stands uh, today. So, but generally the unit will respond anywhere in the state. We've certainly done that all the way to the tip of the northern area, all the way down to central, or central and then southern Illinois. Uh, we've ran uh, responses in those areas as well. So we certainly uh, have a very, a very wide service area that we, that we run on. The organizational structure for the unit, we have the, you know, myself as a director. Uh, underneath myself, I have the operations captain who has three lieutenants under his command. Each lieutenant then is assigned a sergeant and then underneath the sergeants are the general membership. And uh, part of that is uh, we have different team leads uh, that, that take the, uh, the positions of training, mission support, vehicle readiness, search and rescue, and other specific, specified uh, programs such as the drone program. So it works out very well for our, uh, our overall organizational structure. Again, our, excuse me, we do have quite a few requirements that these folks have to meet. Uh, we're actually dispatched through DUCOM, which is the primary uh, dispatch center, the uh, primary 911 dispatch center. We, uh, so that's how we're, uh, we're uh, typically dispatched. We also have a weekly, week, excuse me, required weekly drills. Those are conducted on Wednesday evening at uh, 7 o'clock. There's ample independent study groups uh, that we put together and uh, some are required, required training, but we really embrace uh, incident management. And uh, that's something that uh, uh, follows suit with the law enforcement partners and also our uh, fire service partners that we have. And of course, all the membership is uh, required to wear their uh, PPE uh, when they're on responses as well, either on traffic or fire scenes. Uh, we have a very robust uh, ground search and rescue group. Uh, we're validated through the Illinois Ground Search and Rescue Council. We have 17 members currently certified to do search and rescue anywhere in the state within a 24 hour seven response. Traffic management, I would say, is probably our bread and butter. Uh, we're certified in traffic incident management system. We establish traffic control points. We have traffic control PPE that our folks are uh, required to wear. And we support local agencies with access control to impact areas. That's typically through law enforcement or fire service entities. 
emergency line it's certain it's something that's certainly we provide as well uh, very routinely uh, the emergency services fleet includes three lighting trucks with stationary and portable scene lighting and this is very important for our fire service organizations that we serve and uh, what that does and what that uh, allows them to do is, is uh, illuminate their scenes immediately and automatically uh, and ensures a rapid fire attack and to simulate if you will daytime conditions uh, after we light these uh, these uh, different areas up, uh, reduces tripping hazards and ensures all sides of the building are illuminated and illuminate uh, provides for a much, much safer uh, fire ground. And that's certainly something that we do uh, very routinely with our different yeah. and uh, crime scenes, et cetera, for police departments as well. Uh, we have additional response vehicles other than the 11 that we have for normal response. We have two bicycles uh, to assist us with patrols and events. We have an off-road vehicle that has a fire pump. In fact, we'll be exercising the fire pump tonight for training with some uh, live burn evolutions that we're performing. Uh, we recently took delivery of a decontamination unit, and this is a uh, statewide asset that we have. We also have an air cascade unit we hope to be delivered uh, in June. Uh, this, this particular unit is something where uh, a new uh, resource that we'll have, it's a supply air vehicle, so it allows us to do on-scene uh, changing of air bottles, so they don't have to take those air bottles out of service, take to the station, and then be refilled. And uh, so those uh, fire companies remain in service at all times. It's also very beneficial for them if they have an acquired structure training exercise. Uh, that we can just fill the bottles at the scene, at the scene of the training. And uh, that, uh, so it, we're, it's, it's not um, uh, something that's inconvenient to the fire department to have to take back to the station, uh, refilled and brought back. We can do that on site. Uh, we have a new drone uh, uh, platform that, uh, that uh, you may have seen uh, in some of the news. And these are becoming very, very uh, uh, integral pieces of equipment uh, with uh, organizations such as ourselves, uh, fire departments and police departments. Um, they're a very important uh, tool for us to have. In fact, we just used our drone uh, a couple of weeks ago in South Barrington. They had a very large mulch fire and that fire uh, has occurred on many acres and it's important for us to be able to locate and identify different hot spots where the fire departments have become very useful. Uh, we also use it and uh, deploy with it on our church and rescue uh, Search and rescues that we have also. Our fire decontamination, well, we have a model that we you come into work uh, clean, you go home clean, and they identified 12 different cancers at the link uh, uh, fire, fire deaths, and off, off the duty injuries. And it's very important for us to try and reduce off gassing and, and try and get these carcinogens away from these members until they go back to the station. So the idea is to give them a wash down at the scene to not uh, expose other members of their uh, department prior to going back into a, a clean fire truck, which in, in turn goes back to a clean station. So uh, you can kind of get a picture of what this looks like here uh, with one of our decons, uh, but it reduces our particulars, uh, the, the fly off the gear, but also keeps the, uh, the gear uh, very clean operationally. So it's important for us to uh, do a relatively uh, uh, thorough uh, brush down, but not get the uh, inner, uh, inner core of the gear wet. And uh, we've really become experts at doing that. So we, we rely on, uh, or other departments rely on that, roughly 15, 11, excuse me, 11 fire departments we're working with now to provide their fire, fire de decontamination. Um, we also have the large diameter hose roller. Uh, what you see here is a hose that typically connects between a hydrant and an engine. And when this hose is charged with water, it's especially heavy. And uh, you can see it weighs roughly 944 pounds per 100 feet. And when the fire scenes are over, this is when the hose has to be rolled up. So uh, with this new machine, uh, we're able to do that with a battery uh, battery pack uh, that's attached to it. And after a fire scene, these firemen are obviously very, uh, very worn out. They have tired bodies. So we're able to come in and roll the hose for them, take it to their truck, it reduces the uh, likelihood of any kind of back injuries uh, from having to load this back onto a truck. So it uh, becomes a very useful tool uh, for fire departments to use this piece of The question is, what does the future hold? Well, we, we do have an increase in call volumes. Uh, prior to COVID, uh, we had 250 calls in 2019. The calls were somewhat reduced because of the lack of uh, events that we went on uh, this year. But we're, we're a very busy department. We expect to, to hit somewhere between 250 to 300 calls in the next calendar year.
Uh, we have increased meaningful work for our members. Uh, we have a new facility uh, that we have uh, grant support and we've started to do, uh, to do work on already uh, this year. We hope to be in it uh, within the next six to eight months. Uh, so this new facility has been very supportive of our, of our very modern operations. Uh, we have an improved response time with our career partners, so we are seen as a first response agency. We have several new programs we're implementing. We uh, obviously are uh, hoping to increase the diversity within the membership reflected by the township demographics. Uh, so the question you may have is, how do you join? Uh, probably the best way to join is to go to the Hanover Township website and fill out an application. And it'll come directly to me. We also have a brochure that uh, it goes to different events and we uh, distribute uh, very uh, liberally. And there's a sign on the a slip on the sign on the back of it, I should say, uh, that you can fill out, send to the um, send to the Hanover Township, also to my office, and we'll get you going that way. Uh, with that, I'll happily answer any questions the group may have regarding the Hanover Township Emergency Services. And this last slide kind of gives you an idea of what the uh, the fleet of vehicles that we have. But this is, again, not being fully encompasses all the vehicles that we have. We have 11 in total. But this is the current station. We'll be uh, moving to a new station again later this year uh, on the uh, township grounds. Happily answer any questions you have. Thank you, Mike. Um, are there any questions for him? Okay, thanks again for the opportunity. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Great. Well, now we know a lot more about the emergency services than we probably ever thought we needed. But it was very nice to hear about all the wonderful work that you guys are doing. Um, Mike, I think you did put your information in the chat but if you haven't please um, feel free to do that so that if people want to learn more about how they can partner with you um, they know where to find you and next up we are going to have our small breakout rooms um, networking session and then afterwards we'll come back to the big virtual room and have announcements so um, Jose is going to share the questions that you guys will be um, sharing with each other and then I'll send you guys in your rooms and we'll call you back after um, about 10 minutes. So the question, you know, for everybody to get to know a little bit about yourself and what you currently do, um, you know, think about your first job, meaning your first job, like when you were young, when you were in high school, maybe even before high school, and in any way, shape or form, is it similar or like, what did you learn from that job that you do now that you think, oh yeah, I guess I was doing that way back when and I do that now and I guess it did kind of help me. So being your first job and, you know, kind of how it maybe relates to what you do now. Okay, thank you, Jose. We'll also send it on the chat. Hopefully the chat will remain in the room. So here we go. Thank you, Jose, for that great um, networking question that got everybody sharing. Um, we are um, going to do announcements now. If anybody has an announcement, uh, feel free to share. I think the best way to do it is for me to call um, people that we were not unmuting and um, competing for the virtual podium. So, um, Jose, I'll call on you first since you're right next to me. No announcements for now. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Marlene? No announcements. Jesse Colon? Oh, you're on. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Sorry, I had to mute it. Um, yes. Um, I'm doing my first charity workout on um, this Memorial weekend from 8 a.m. to noon at my location, 317 Randall Road, Cross Kicks Fitness. Um, we are doing a thing called the Murph Challenge, which is to commemorate Lieutenant uh, Navy uh, Murphy that was a big um, fitness fanatic. Um, he passed away in combat, um, and they dedicated a workout to him. So uh, most of the small box gyms, CrossFit gyms, things like that, host this Murph Challenge workout, um, and they donate funds to a local veteran organization, which I'll be doing. Uh, all I'm asking is a simple $5 donation or more. If you guys uh, just decide to come, um, everyone's welcome, members, non-members. Um, and that's from 8 a.m. to noon. We're going to have lots of coaches to be able to coach you through uh, the workout. And um, it's for any skill level, any age level. Uh, we're going to have people as young as 16, 17 doing it, all the way up to our oldest member, which will be 68 years old. So um, 
yeah, you can come out, have some fun, get some fitness in. It should be pretty sunny weather outside. But most importantly, get back um, to the community. That's what I try to do on a monthly basis with our charity workouts. Thank you, Jesse. Um, Amber? Thank you. Um, our announcement is that we are getting ready to start our summer park neighborhood outreach um, sites. They'll start the second week in June. I have a um, flyer that the Northern LA Food Bank has given out front and back, England, English and Spanish. Um, we'll be in four neighborhoods weekly and we'll be at six pop-up places every other week. Um, we have bilingual teachers that will be going in. We have 24 partners that'll be rotating through with like health navigators, um, hopefully on-site vaccines. Um, dental care for children, uh, all kinds of stuff. It's on our website. If you want to learn more about that, it's every day from 1130 <clears throat> to 1230, um, different areas. Thank you, Amber. Um, Evangeline? Hi. Uh, so uh, the representative's office is hosting with um, Senator Christina Castro, a free community shredding event. Uh, they tend to do this annually, sometimes twice annually. Um, it's going to be with the, uh, the KCT Credit Union um, and Gail Borden Library on June 12th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Um, at the Gail Borden Public Library. Uh, so you can come and you can, you can shred important documents and stuff like that. Uh, please don't bring plastic bags. Um, so, you know, you can, you can bring them in giant baskets and stuff like that. People come in and we'll help you all with that. Um, and uh, just, just let people know that they can, you know, shred their, their sensitive documents safely. Thank you. So it looks like Zoom now will put you at the top of the screen if you raise your hand. So if you have an announcement, please raise your hand and I'll just call on people that way. Uh, well, raise your hand through the Zoom function. All right, so up next is Elena Gardea. Thank you. Um, two things. I want to mention that registration for credit classes are now underway, which is for summer and fall for associate degree certificate um, and courses. And the second thing I want to mention is that registration for English as a second language, GED and citizenship classes will start um, July 1st, but people can go, uh, anyone who is interested can go online um, for the adult classes and uh, go to elgin.edu adult ed to start to put themselves on the list to then begin the testing and the rest of the process. Thank you, Elena. Thank you. Up next, uh, Lorena. Hello, everyone. Um, so I have a huge announcement. Um, so maybe some of you uh, have uh, got the the email this past Monday or maybe saw it on social media, but Greater Elgin Family Care Center changed its name to Greater Family Health. Um, so all of our health centers, we have nine health centers and all of them are now called Greater Family Health. Uh, if you, maybe you weren't or were aware that we have multiple locations and they were all called something different. So it just made it very difficult. And we want to make sure that uh, just our patients Patients know um, that we are still we are still the same the same organization. We are still a federally qualified health center. All the services have remained the same, and um, we do have a new phone number and a new website. So I will put that in the chat um, so that everybody has it. And we're also going to be working through uh, getting some brochures out to the community. But if you if you do need some brochures, just shoot me an email uh, so that I can make sure that you you get some. So that's my announcement. So thank you. Thank you, Lorena. And congratulations on the name change. Um, up next, I have Tom Gutenberg. Yes, thank you. Uh, so just two announcements. Uh, the Hanover Township Food Pantry and Astor Avenue in Hanover Park will be distributing free summer lunches. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, for those 18 and younger, Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 1 o'clock. So just come into the food pantry. We're not going to ask any questions, no registration. We'll give out uh, free summer lunches to kids, again, starting June 7th at the food pantry in Hanover Park. And then our back-to-school backpack distrib distribution is underway. Most needed items to be donated include backpacks, spiral notebooks, pencils, markers, flash drives, 
two pocket folders. We also take gift cards to Kohl's and Target, um, Walmart, any other major retail that we'll use to get supplies. Donations can be dropped off at any township office, the Isaac Walton Center in Elgin on J Street, our main campus in Bartlett, or the food pantry in Hanover Park. Last year, even the, during the pandemic, we gave it about 800 backpacks full of school supplies to kids in need. If you have any questions, just visit our website at hanover-township.org uh, or uh, feel free to reach out to me here in the chat. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Gil? All right, thank you. I uh, just wanted to let everybody know that uh, the Coalition for Safe and Healthy Elgin uh, recently launched a podcast uh, where we speak with uh, local uh, community leaders and we talk to them a little bit about not only coalition work, but about what they do and how we all can kind of help each other to reduce underage drinking and, and substance use uh, among minors here in Elgin. So check it out. The title is called Encouraging Conversation, and you'll find them on iTunes, uh, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and all those others. Uh, I'd love for you all to take a listen. If you like it, uh, give us a rating. If not, uh, let us know that as well. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, Dr. Cardi Lepin. Yeah, hi. I'm the Director of Outreach at the Place for Children with Autism. <clears throat> we just opened a location in Elgin. So it's 2450 Westfield Drive, right off of Randall Road. Uh, we provide therapy for children ages two to six that have an autism diagnosis. So really working on getting communication up, social skills, toilet training, school readiness, um, anything these children might need and their families might need. We provide services in English and in Spanish. And we do help low income families be able to access therapy. So we have a grants department, uh, we will work with the family. This therapy is so, so important um, for any child diagnosed with autism. So if anybody has a family that needs help, I'll put our outreach number in the chat box, but you can go to our website, the place for children with autism. Uh, we have 12 locations, but Elgin is our newest one and it's the most prettiest and there's a big outdoor structure. I mean, it is an awesome location. And our services are a great alternative to school. So if a child is not excelling in the school environment, they need that one-on-one -on -one support. That's where our full day program comes in handy. Try to think of if there's anything else to tell you guys. Oh, I do free workshops all the time. Uh, so free workshops on like toilet training, problem behavior, uh, how to have courageous conversations. That's like more for staff that are suspecting a child has autism and doesn't quite know how to tell the family really anything that you guys might need. So uh, happy to collaborate and yeah, happy to talk to any family, even if they're not ready to enroll or they're too old for our program. My job is to make sure that they have all the resources they need to, to help their family out. Thank you. Um, up next is Maria Borrero. Hola, hi guys. Um, so I have a few announcements. Um, would I be able to upload some of my flyers onto the chat as a file attachment? Yes. Okay, great. So we are still accepting application for our Kids United Summer Program. This is free to any Elgin um, District U46 um, uh, six student. We have available for fourth to sixth grade in the morning and then for um, seventh to 17 years of age, uh, from four to seven. The program focuses on arts, craft, culinary arts, sports. Um, it's ran by in collaboration with U46. I'm going to attach the flyer for that. Um, applications close on May, May 31st. We also are doing a Spanish landlord training class. This is a very fun class to attend. Um, any, anybody who is a landlord or um, and speaks Spanish and would like to know a little bit more about how to work in collaboration with Elgin Police Department just to do crime-free housing education, how to maintain a, a safe um, properties in the area. We are offering a, a four hour course for free with our Spanish speaking officers. Um, and it's just like a great tool to have and, and share with your resources, share it with, your, with, with the community. So I'm gonna put the information in the flyer um, on the chat, but feel free to reach out to me if you have any other questions. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Uh, Jose Cuevas. Thanks. Uh, the Elgin Parks and Recreation Foundation is looking for board members. Uh, so if you are interested or if you know somebody who's interested, we're always looking for new board members because we have I don't know, 10, 12 people and they're constantly turning over every two years or so, I think. So if you know somebody, there, there isn't a specific requirement or a specific industry which you need to be a part of. 
uh, any any person uh, will work. Thanks. Thank you. Is there anyone who has an announcement but can't do the oh, Carol? Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to announce that the Elgin Area Leadership Academy is opening registrations for new applicants for the class of 2022. The Elgin Hispanic Network has a number of graduates. I see Jose Macias is in there. Hi, Jose. Uh, he was a graduate a few years ago. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of folks who have been involved from not-for-profits. This is a leadership development program, operates on Saturday mornings, usually once a month in October until May of next year. 11 sessions focusing on different topic areas. Go to our chamber website, elginchamber.com, or give me a call at any point in time, 847-741-5660. Glad to talk to you about uh, the Leadership Academy and the benefit that it brings to you as a business leader. Uh, we want to help evolve community leadership as well. So those of you that are working your way through leadership positions, we'd love to have you involved with us. Thank you, Diana. Thank you, Carol. Anyone else who maybe couldn't? Oh, Donna, go ahead and. Yes, um, on behalf of the um, Elgin Community College Foundation, I'd like to uh, invite everyone to participate in the golf outing, annual golf outing. It's June 21st at the Elgin Country Club, and all of the uh, proceeds benefit um, for student scholarships. So it's an annual event. It's always been very well attended. So we're trying to recover from last year's pandemic, uh, which of course will put a spoiler on that. But so we're um, really putting a lot of effort into this year's event. And if you don't golf, you can also just sign up for dinner uh, or lunch and come join us. So uh, check it out on Elgin um, Community College website. Thank you, Donna. Anyone else with announcements? I don't see any. Oh, I see one hand. Laura Barrett. Hey, there we go. Finally got the button. Um, I'm Laura Barrett from the King County Health Department. And just a reminder, um, you know, we're out doing the COVID vaccine. So if you have not received your vaccine, um, still have vaccines out there to um, obtain. And if there's any in your organizations or any of your clients that you're reaching out with, um, remind them that it is available and we are getting back to doing things, right? I heard so many things today about things that we're getting back to from, you know, the past 15 months of all the shutdown and, you know, limited, you know, face-to-face -face interaction. So the vaccines are definitely helping. They're uh, reaching on out. We know we've got more areas in the county that we can certainly reach into. Um, so if anyone's needing some support or some help with getting connected, the canebacks.org uh, website is good, and um, we can certainly get you help in getting set on up for doing this vaccine somewhere. Um, just a reminder to get everybody out there and doing that. Thanks. Thank you. Any other announcements? I think that's it. Um, we are hoping that we get to see some of you next month on June 23rd at noon is when we will have our uh, picnic to celebrate our scholarship recipients. So hopefully you can join us. And I think we are concluded here. If anybody wants to hang out and ask any final questions or make any connections or save things from the chat, feel free to do that. But if not, we will see you next month. Uh, yes, they have